spoilers <laughs> coming about if you if only we could go back in time friends should you watch in time this 2011 film starring justin timberlake is set in a future where once you reach age 25 you stop aging and time is a commodity traded like money big shout out to michelangelo for suggesting this one if anyone has any recommendations please let us know in the comments we literally just finished watching this and now we're going to shotgun rate it out of 10 in nine different categories starting with the all important enjoyment rating out of 10 to one decimal place three two one go 5.7 8.7 <laughs> 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 yeah, that's I really that's enjoyed so, it. That's so hard. I really enjoyed it. I I think um I mean first of all, Michelangelo man, what a suggestion. What, what a, a guy. suggestion. What a um, top geezer. I don't know if it was like necessarily that good, but yeah. I just really enjoyed it. Hey, that's what it's that's what the whole system's there for. It's like if you you've got the option to have films that Maybe yeah. other people wouldn't like as much. Bit that you corny. Really do. There's a guy yeah. with a tree hat for some reason. Yeah, There's yeah. watched way too much Neo. Yeah, like, it's you know it's it, but it's enjoyable. It's so much fun. Like I just the whole concept and the, and you know what this came as a consequence of the Mad Max the Furiosa video. Yeah, right. Right. Where one of the things that I could not stop saying was like none of this makes sense. None right. of this makes sense. They've come up with this idea. They've tried to explore it and mm -hmm. just none of it's been thought through. This really felt thought through to me. Like, this felt like they came up with this interesting idea. Swap time and money, effectively. Like, everyone has an infinite amount. There's, there's sure. time as a, co a commodity, mm -hmm. right? Then, like, how does it... Uh, treat it with a sort of capitalist idea. How would it play out? And, you know, I thought that it was reasonably well put together. I didn't think it was... I feel like they could have had a ton of pitfalls and they didn't. Mm. And, and, and then the plot, you know, it, it was just very, very exciting. So yeah. Why, why, what was it again? 5.7. So that's not good. <laughs> not, Give us an not, idea. Not great. No. Um, okay. So on my rankings then now 6.5 for me is kind of average all right, better than average. Kind of like, yeah, it's all right. Okay. And so 5.7 is not, bad bad sounds bad it sounds bad but i'm trying to be a bit more I'm, I'm trying to give a bit more leeway for for things that that get really bad so hang on can we trust any of the previous ratings now you've just shifted your whole dynamic no no you can because <laughs> <laughs> i've decided now that seven means something you can. <laughs> entirely different no it doesn't it still reflects the previous scores but okay. I did enjoy all of the films we watched to at least a certain extent. And my comparisons were kind of classics, comparing classics. But what was it that inhibited the enjoyment of the film for you? Um, okay, so I like the concept. I, I like cool the concept. Yeah, yeah. I thought it was very inventive. Everyone smoking hot. <laughs> Everyone was <laughs> unbelievable. 25, across the board. Yeah. Great way to have a gorgeous cast. So, Killian Murphy didn't look twenty five in it, mind. No, but he was by, he was the best uh, performance, I'd say. I mean, come on, he was I a mean, bit like... of a step ahead of everyone else in terms. Of... <laughs> I think that's not fair. <laughs> I think that's it for me. The JT's beautiful, man. What are you talking about? Films that feel like parodies, where every line is like you imagine in a writer's room. Uh, presumably, this was written by one or two people. I haven't checked, but okay. let's say for me, it felt a bit like people were trying to come up with an idea for a sketch and then they're like and then he could say this and then he could it, do if... this and and i think so conceptually quite cool mm. interesting different very interesting unique yeah um original original but the kind of fuck i don't want to swear too much i'm gonna fuck the man fuck the system yeah we bonnie and clyde where we're stealing time yeah and then every moment is like but quippy was the word you came out with once. So yeah, it was a lot of... it's not even so much the quippiness was one element of <laughs> <laughs> the sort of stuff I don't like in films that much. <laughs> I loved it. <laughs> yeah. I mean, no, no, it was very, very corny at times. Yeah, yeah. Some went okay, some of the quips not so okay. I think for me, whenever anyone comes out with a really niche idea for a film like i remember the trailer coming out for this mm -hmm. and thinking this is going to be the best film that's ever come out okay yeah, 2011 yeah i would have been uh, 13 or something like that and i saw the trailer for this in the cinema and was blown away by the idea Damn right, i never cool. i never ended up watching it um and re-watching films like that 
I used to always think, why did that not? I remember that film. Why did that not become a massive success? And I think it's because you can't just have an original idea. Mm -hmm. You obviously need to have all of the um, elements conducive to a good film, like your plots, your characters, your... But that's dog. good. You gave an enjoyment rating mm. in the fives. That's like one of the lowest you've ever given. That yeah. That is only... That's only been topped by like the Mad Max films, which yeah. for, and, and, for and all was... intents and purposes are an atrocious set of films. <laughs> yeah, I, I, um, I gave it higher than Mad Max because I didn't find it as boring okay. as the Mad Max films. Was it a little bit boring, this one? I think all of the... Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. Here's how I'd describe it. The stuff that was supposed to be taken seriously, I found kind of comical. Like? Like the death of his mother. Yeah. Oh, man. Are we supposed to not be spoiling things? Spoilers. <laughs> Coming about... If, you, if only we could go back in time, friends. All of the time-related puns. <laughs> I, Another big one. I me. couldn't wait for this episode to just every couple minutes, just any like time, just oh man. All right, you know what? Let's just say this is a spoiler review. This is a spo we'll spoiler. We'll put spoiler. Well, maybe we'll chime something in for the start. At the start. Because... Near the start. <laughs> I I don't know if you've come out. Okay, yeah. So mm. like it was a little cheap and tacky, but did you not enjoy? the 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 chase and the and the what and the world building you know like that was one of the things i thought maybe you would appreciate was such an interest like it's kind of yeah so a very interesting universe that they've created yeah but every time something happened that would be forgivable like like him getting arrested in the mansion yeah and then running you know away. what we're gonna take away your time and then him actually i'm gonna just whack all these guys over the head and escape and i'm yeah. going to <laughs> i'm going what's your problem <laughs> i'm going to i'm going to kidnap this woman who conveniently just walked away from her guards last minute saying we don't need to worry Fred, about she this was guy. in love with him she was she, not at that point she was yes yeah, she was <laughs> she, she was, was in love with him the second she laid eyes on that gorgeous <laughs> specimen very handsome man very <laughs> so you know, gorgeous. he got he got an extra point for the handsomeness <laughs> of the cast it was in that era i think before before they tried to make things realistic like that that late 90s yeah. to mid 2000s i mean this 2010s it's 2011 it's a bit behind <laughs> isn't it really <laughs> but where okay we've got everyone has to be 25 and they're all going to be gorgeous yeah and i just thought at one point okay the concept is cool but i guess what they've really done is they've completely cured any aging process right yes yes genetics so, but yeah it's when they were born it's a coding thing before they're born so then they've commodified time mm -hmm. yeah but what i didn't quite understand is if what they've done is they've completely cured aging mm -hmm. why why does why do they then actually work it so that not only are we curing ages but we're actually going to kill you if you run out of time like so that not everyone can live forever so you cure aging how do you handle that that like the the natural thing from there is well hang on a minute then does everybody just live forever well then nobody could have kids or yeah so what do we do about that well let's say then that time is a finite but managed resource mm. and then the people who are worthy get to keep it which seems like a conceivable way that that might unfold i i kind of yeah i did see that i think my issue is then okay so we've cre we've we've basically by um, healing the aging process, we now need to solve this issue and let's do it in a way where this, I, I think taking a big back step in the science of, okay. We, they didn't we've, try and address any science. They, no. did, they didn't go anywhere near that. That's not a critique. <laughs> Maybe not. I, I think for me, like, I really like that concept. And then halfway through, I was like, wait a minute, they've just solved aging. Why, why is it? I know they said it's because no, of I'm not, I'm not having this. That's not for you've not justified that one bit. One maybe bit. Not, maybe they, not. That is like that is like the thing that I liked about it was it was like that is a conceivable route that the world would go down if you solve the aging process. Something that people are actually trying to do, right? You want like everyone wants to solve the mm. aging thing. Yeah, so sure. what would happen? It's like, well, you know, maybe that isn't it, but conceivably that actually could be one of the ways that they handle it, a managed resource, and then they have to kind of allocate it out in some way, and it just ends up naturally falling into yet another capitalist system. Maybe, but I think 
I, for me, if we're at a point where we've com- not only managed to completely halt aging, but got to the point where we can actually stop people's aging at 25 mm. and have the control to actually put essentially a bio clock on them, mm-hmm. which we can completely, mm-hmm. we can we can control transactionally. If you've got to that point, wouldn't you be at the point where you can kind of just colonize Mars? How is that a solution? Because why does the solution have to be, we've, we've solved the aging process, mm-hmm. now we need to... It's an overpopulation thing, right? Yeah, yeah. So but, you colonize but, Mars and then what happens then? But with, you know, you've got places to go. Why aren't they expanding? That, it feels that, like they're... Okay, fine. Maybe they can't. But even if they did, eventually you would still run out and you would have the same problem again. You, you would still have to solve the same issue. But that blocker, I feel, came really early, right? Wouldn't, wouldn't they have tried galactic colonization first? I if feel you're like saying where... that this film gets a five because they didn't address galactic colonization is a little harsh, Fred. I mean, like, let's say for argument's sake that in this... They didn't even say how long it was, which was really interesting from mm. when this film started, from when they kind of figured right, out right. this stuff. But let's say that they didn't have to explain this galactic thing because it clearly isn't a thing in this universe. Mm. Maybe they can't. Maybe it just they physically just for some reason they can't. Or maybe they have and Mars is full. Maybe and they still have to solve the exact same problem. I guess for me if if you've got the capability to do all the things they could do, it felt like would there be yes, overpopulation's an issue, but would that mean that we have to make sure people we kill people at a certain point. There's a limit to the amount of time that you can't have everybody immortal, right? That was kind of the point in the movie was. Yeah, yeah. That, that For one person to be immortal, enough. a lot of people have to die. That and was that kind of the point. And that message was quite cool, and, actually. And, and also quite clear, Fred. <laughs> yeah, that was like the point in the movie. <laughs> I, I'm, a little di- I'm a little disappointed that went over your head, man. <laughs> no, no, I, I, I get that. <laughs> Maybe Why I don't just go to Mars, the idiots? I think things that I struggle with is when you have a really interesting concept, but then a tiny bit of digging, and I'm like, hmm. No, see, I completely disagree, and that's why okay, I like this enough. movie. Is it's, it's an interesting they, concept, they gave, and they thought about it quite carefully. Your, yeah, they clearly had thought about something, some solution, and the solution for me was like, hmm, maybe not enough. Colonizing Mars wouldn't be another solution. No, I'm saying if you're at a point where you are this far forward Mm. in terms of scientific Mm. capability, that not only have you halted aging, but we can actually specifically make Mm. sure you stop at 25 Mm. and up to the age of 25, you get a year in the bank. And then we have a bio clock on you, in which case when you run out of time. A managed commodity. Basically, the fact that they had that much control over that process Mm -hmm. and yet still needed that process. Well, people would have to die. Right. The suspension of disbelief. Oh, po- yeah, potentially people would have to die. So how would you solve that? I don't know. I just didn't... I don't think I quite enjoyed the way that they solved it. All right, well, fair enough. Well, I think, I, right, I think you're I wrong. Gave, I gave an example, actually. <laughs> I, think, I think you're fine. I, they would have gone to fucking Mars. Think, and everyone would have had whatever they wanted. I say that this film gets a five on enjoyment because they didn't go to Mars. There's it's enough, a ridiculous take, Fred. There's enough resources. And, you, and you're damaging the reputation of our page. <laughs> And anyone who doesn't believe me is a fucking idiot, all right? <laughs> no, fair enough. Well, if you had any ideas as to how they could have solved it that were better than mine, which I didn't put any thought into apart from just now, uh, please let us know. But that wasn't the only thing. Okay. Right? The dialogue. Yeah. I did struggle with um, You know how you said for super bad? Yeah. It fell into a category of films that you really struggle with. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And I think the kind of... Um, I don't know how you describe what, what sort of category of film would you? It's not just it's science fiction. Sci- it is sci-fi. It's sci-fi, though, yeah. yeah. But I mean, like it's a bit different. It's... And a popcorn bait. Get to the cinema. Well, don't don't think too much into fun. it. Here for a bit of a romp. Yeah, yeah. It's a rompy sci-fi. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> make night take. <laughs> <laughs> rompy sci-fi as a genre. Scores high. (laughs) Maybe. (laughs) There were just some things. So, yeah, the dialogue I I found a bit... I I found it very funny. I'm not sure how funny it was supposed to be. We're running out of time, by the way. (laughs) We 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 got a clock. For anyone interested, there's a digital clock next to us (laughs) counting down to zero. (laughs) Um, So, make it quick. Okay, I'll I'll, I'll read some of my favourite lines then. So, first off, straight at the bat, I think that one of the first... First things that happened is there's a voiceover at the start. Yeah. Very much a product of that time. Yeah. 
Uh, don't <laughs> see many of those these days. <laughs> and so immediately I'm like, okay. It takes me back to my childhood, to films which I'm not sure I enjoyed that much. Um, who... <laughs> His mum asked him about having a girlfriend. His mum's very young and beautiful, of yeah, course. It's strange that was, not <laughs> yeah. it? I got used goes, to it pretty quickly, though. He literally goes, <laughs> yeah, I was okay with that. All, After of, the, a couple all minutes. of these people were like, in crippling poverty, are incredibly beautiful. <laughs> Absolutely stunning. stunning. They all spend their money on Dyson Air Wraps. <laughs> and he goes, but he goes, who has time? for a girlfriend <laughs> and I literally always looked at you we watched this film oh can you just check I didn't bump them I bumped the mic yeah 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 continue sure. I got it we watched this film in complete um <laughs> we watched this film in complete silence we were next <laughs> to each other which is rarely the case and we've just recorded it straight after but there were so many times in this film where I almost burst out laughing yeah we had to control yeah there were a few pretty funny moments I'll tell you one quite funny moment was the the arm wrestle for the for the time yeah yeah. That was, I gotta what, say, what scene if, that was. if there were any moments where I was like, yeah, that's a little questionable. <laughs> it was, it was the performance in that was just horrific to watch. Like, I think, but the ending of it was really fun, <laughs> right? Because he, he, all along, he had a gun in his sock <laughs> yeah. with, with yeah, three bullets in moments. the chamber. That's one of those moments. And then he's like, bang, 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 <laughs> job done. Also, how is it that them looking at the time on your arm somehow means that you win the fight? That <laughs> is ridiculous. That was one of those things that I what are you thinking Michelangelo <laughs> this is a rubbish film that was one of those one moments which may be similar for me to the the concept of the time being money and that's the only the only possible solution for overpopulation the other thing that I mean <laughs> one of the other things that I remember thinking hmm, they've kind of just not really explained <laughs> that but I know it's going to come back is the whole arm wrestle fighting so there so there's a way of there's a way of solving conflict in the universe yep. where everyone's got the time on their arm and basically you lock your arms to change time but in these conflicts they will lock the arms in a sort of an arm wrestly fight and mm. It seems like a sort of battle of concentration almost. Um, but but supposedly seems, it's strength-based? It, it's, it, it's kind of a strength concentration thing, and, and, I, and I think maybe your arm needs to be on top. Yeah, it wasn't sure. very clear, but top. what was clear was Justin Timberlake was very good at <laughs> it because, good. because he went down to five <laughs> seconds or something, and then they looked away, and that meant he could then win the arm wrestle. <laughs> that was his move. Did you notice that? He did that a lot in the film yeah, where yeah, he yeah. just went down down to like five seconds and then yeah, everyone yeah, got yeah. a bit freaked out. I thought that was fun. You know? won the gambling. It wasn't good, Fred. It was fun. <laughs> I'm having fun. <laughs> well, for me, I think, you know, the concept of Chekhov's gun. No, I do not. So uh, I believe initially written by Anton Chekhov, who's a playwright. Mm. Um, it's a storytelling technique where if you clearly signpost something or if there's some, the, the example he gave is, if you're in an environment or you're on stage and there's a gun that's pointed out as part of the scene, someone goes, look at that gun over there. That gun has to be brought back. It's necessary to the plot yeah, later. Okay, yeah, you yeah. can't just throw out red herrings that's or so not even throw out red yeah. herrings, but you can't, nothing that you point to, everything, ha needs to be everything has to have relevance. Okay. So the whole, the story that you make has to have relevance. So they, Sometimes it's really subtle, and sometimes people do it in a very obvious way. Yeah. And I mean, they had this talk about the arm wrestling thing, and you knew it was coming at some was, point. He basically explained for expositional uh, purposes to um, Amanda Seyfried's character how this arm wrestling works, and he said how his dad, the technique his dad used, yeah. which was to let the other guy completely take like, all of your time. Win. And, and then, then it, don't worry because looking... they'll start looking at your arm at the last minute when you're about to be drained, and then, and then you just flip you their hand more over. Strength and... than them now. <laughs> also, when you when you flip their hand over, there's no way they can possibly turn just it back. Turn it back, in. and also it goes. The time goes a lot quicker back goes, into your way. when when the right is needed to be the case at least. <laughs> and, you're, and you've got okay, an anchor look, gun. Okay, look, Fred. Like I said, not exactly the most watertight, but it was definitely fun. Can I say another fun bit? For Go on. Reference. You say some fun bits. Amanda is what? Can you pronounce her surname for me? I think it's Seafried. Seafried. I can't Seyfried. remember her the character's name, unfortunately. But when she shot Killian Murphy, I was so hyped. I oh, was really? like, yeah, I was like that. Uh, that was like in the Kingdom of the Apes when she just choked that guy to death. 
right? Yeah, okay. And I was just like, what? Spoilers for Kingdom of the <laughs> <laughs> By the way, just in case you're listening, we might spoil some other stuff. <laughs> um, okay, so <laughs> let's pretend I didn't say that, but the um, it was another one of those moments where I was like, Ooh, how are they going to do this? And then she just shot him. And I was like, oh, that's quite a fun way of getting out of this. I really like that. I thought that was really cool. Yeah. Okay. I mean. So the concept was watertight. The arm wrestle was fun-ish. <laughs> Neil Caffrey was in it. <laughs> there was a moment. There were so many moments where I just burst out laughing. So the he's from a ghetto. And in the ghetto, they live day to day. They're running out of time. The cost of living, which yep. is actually the cost of time, is increasing day by day. Um, and all of the people in this situation don't really know how they're being duped by the system. Um, And then he runs into an affluent gentleman who's getting hammered at a local dive. And that guy has a sentry on his wrist. Um, A huge amount of money in the ghetto. Yeah, Uh, it's uh, inconceivable uh, for them. Yeah, yeah. And so this guy um, naturally causes trouble because people are going to steal this time from him. Very easy to steal time from people, by the way. Yeah, really. You just grab them by the wrist yeah. and then you stole them all their hand. time. <laughs> yes. Ooh, God, there goes a hundred years. For people, Rips. for people who regularly have hours on their hand. <laughs> Not a great system. Yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. so he causes um, some uh, trouble, some Minute men, they were called, basically local thugs and gangsters, come over to nick this time. And that's when um, Justin Timberlake's character saves him. And so what he decides to do is whilst they're hiding out and laying low, he gives him this sentry. And that kind of kicks off the police. For saving him. The police in this um, world are basically called timekeepers. So they... they wear keep, leather. Yeah, they wear leather. As, as all <laughs> apocalyptic. <watching> Mad Max. <laughs> as any police officer should. Yep. So... They are on a on a hunt to find Justin Timberlake's character. There's a moment where they're like, well, we'll never find him. He's gone. And then they just check the security camera footage. And when they do, <laughs> they see the guy who um, has died, who they're trying to locate. They're trying to... The rich guy who whose time... Yeah. And they're, they're following the time. That's yeah, what they say. Yeah. Anyway, so he jumps he jumps off a building when his time expires, and Justin Timberlake has just realised he's given him all this time, runs over, just too late, misses it, and then he looks at a camera, a security camera a that 4K spots this. 4K CCTV. Yep. And then he just kind of literally turns and, like, runs a couple of steps out of shot. And then one of the guys goes, he's fast. He's a, he's a, this guy's a runner. <laughs> they keep talking about how fast he is. He's, he's at sorry. no point does he show any relative no speed knows. to anyone no else. No one's seen that. That's just a lie. Yeah, wow. yeah, and things like... The police Mustangs were cool, yes or no? Police Mustangs were quite cool. The electric police Mustangs, yeah. to go with the leather, it was very cool. But just things like, okay, at one point they jump off that, like, not very dangerous, they, they jump off, like, the first floor of a building onto a car, and then they go, they won't dare jump after and us. because Killian no one, does no, it, it's Killian, like, let's go! Killian does, okay, which is fair enough. I think it was just the way it was done was, they jumped out of a building, yeah. onto this car, Justin Timberlake's like, don't worry, they won't follow us, because no one wants to risk any injury or... Yeah, no one wants to take risks. To, no one wants to die in a way other than their time running out because mm. that's the biggest risk if you have time. So he jumps off and they start running off. And you're like, okay, fair enough. That's all right. And then he just they just turn around <laughs> and go, look, I told you no one would jump off. <laughs> yeah, okay. Like... Well, they wanted to check if people were chasing them, Fred. <laughs> yeah, okay. God, you're so unforgiving of this franchise. No, no. Not right. franchise, just single film. Somehow, inconceivably, not See, getting a which, sequel. Which other bits did I uh, not like? Um, some of the lines were pretty pretty great. Did you remember the CGI in the car crash? CGI car crash was... Uh... That was I saw you ride down when that happened. I was like, I think that's coming up later. That CGI car crash that was, it. was dreadful. I might animate something better this evening on bloody... Yeah, that really was... Cut, so, yeah, that that really good. was... Uh, his mum, when she was... His mum's death... She was, was gorgeous as well. Hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> she, like... They... they t- Firstly, she de- did she pay back time she owed to the bank or was she depositing yeah, time? something like that. Something like that. Yeah, they, so they she, lend time in this universe for they, interest. They lend time. So I think she paid back her two days or whatever she had. Whatever it was. And she was left with an hour and a half and the bus costs an hour to get to where she needs to be. Two. But this time it costs two hours because oh. there's interest. <laughs> Apologies. <laughs> Wait a minute, I know you love this film, mate, but... <laughs> 
give me a minute. Eight point so, seven. <laughs> so, wait a minute, we're gonna have a chat about that in a minute. I loved it. It was so fun, so, man. Anyway, so the bus driver says, "Sorry, we can't do anything to this gorgeous woman who probably would do anything for, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this time, whatever." So everyone's gorgeous, though. Everyone That's, is. It's fine. Fair enough. Yeah. Everyone's stunning. Apart from um, bus driver. So she decides to ru- run, as he asked her to. Yeah. It's a two-hour walk. She's got an hour and a half. Yeah. Yeah, they're insanely fit in this. Like, yeah. I mean, like athletic. Like, the amount of running in heels. Particularly because she ran in heels. Did you yeah, know? I know. There's a lot of running in heels. The whole way she I was, ran pretty, in I was very impressed. Yeah. <laughs> but, I mean, you know, if you're not going to age and you've got 50 years, maybe she trains track throughout the week, you know? Like, yeah. you, when she's... Well, outside of her her work to make some money, she then uses that money. So you don't know, Fred, right? Potentially. So well, the, I, I thought, feel like you're being incredibly unfair. Well, I thought if you were running for your <laughs> life, you'd probably make it. You'd take your heels off, I think. You'd take your heels they off. They were nice heels. And if it was a two-hour walk, I could probably run it in an hour, don't you reckon? I don't, I don't know what's a two-hour walk in distance in kilometers. I reckon you, you run twice as fast as you walk. No, I, I reckon I reckon a two-hour walk, would, how far would you come A mile out? takes like half an hour, 20, 20 minutes, half an hour to walk, whereas it takes like between six so and ten 4K? minutes, depending 4K? on how quick you run. 5K? 5K in two hours? That sounds about right. You could do 5K in 30 minutes. Yeah, so... Yeah, so, she, so a two-hour walk. She 5K. had an hour and a half. So she and she ran out of time. <laughs> well, and he ran to her still as well. Fun. <laughs> he ran to her as well. Did you know? By, it's the, way, by the way, he ran to. How quick do you reckon the bus got there? Because he ran. He realized when the bus wasn't there that mm-hmm. she wasn't there. So he ran half the way. Yeah. So she must have ran, you know, three quarters of that distance. So. Yeah. Well, you know, in what? an hour and a half. Um, so moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but then his, her death was hilarious. Like. It was pretty It was pretty ridiculous how often he ended up being there in the final seconds of people's, people's lives. Like, lives. it just wouldn't happen like that. But, I mean, you know. It's lucky not... he was so fast. It was <laughs> <laughs> just the right speed. He wasn't fast enough, obviously, <laughs> at the end, for dramatic he, effect. He worked out that the policeman was also from his neck of the woods because he was also fast. <laughs> he literally went, the line was something like... <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've written it down. You can run, so can you. <laughs> Did you used to live here? <laughs> it was great. Some it other belters. Was brilliant, Fred. You saved my life. When? Now. Yeah, that wasn't good. <laughs> um, now, I'd say your money is your life, but your money is your life. <laughs> I don't even remember that. No, it's your money or your life. I butchered the... I butchered oh, the okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. But also, did, what did you think of them? Okay, let me see. Is there one more thing I wanted to say? We are we are about? running out of time. We are 10 minutes over. I know, but there was lots with the movie. That We're going to have to just be mega quick on Chris. Um, uh, you, okay. Um, one thing I did find a bit of a weird one was when she said, I know how we could get back at them. I think... No, it wasn't the million years bit, but it was... Oh, okay. I can help you get all the time you want. So she's come on side. He initially kidnapped her. And she's like, actually, I like the way this guy lives. And my dad doesn't really care about me. I'm bored. I'm bored. Let's go. So she goes to him after really being invested in his plan. I can help you get all the time you want. And then the next shot is us looking at the time bank, which her dad owns. Mm -hmm. So we're thinking, how is she going to work out a way to manipulate the situation with her connections in order to get this time. And what they do is the next thing you see is a truck driving into the building and then just walking in, stealing all this time and giving it to them. And you think, has no one else tried that ever? (laughs) She's good at bank robbing, man. She knows she knows the blueprints of the bank, so she knows where, she knows where you can to drive, drive the truck. <laughs> into. Did you know it's the vault to the million years at the climax of the movie? The pin code was like a six digit pin of someone's birthday. Of Charles Darwin's birthday. <laughs> which she knew of the It's so good. It's such a good film. I wonder if maybe 8.7 was a bit generous. 8.7. It was in the eights. So I'm pretty sure and you And then gave... I only had a few seconds to think of it whilst I was reading this script. I think you gave Godfather an 8.7 or <laughs> something. <laughs> yeah, but, right, but I, I'm trying to get... I'm trying to really differentiate between how enjoyable a movie is and how good a movie is. And a lot of the things that we've pulled it apart right. for is, how, is, is where it's going to fall down in the critical score in just a moment. 
but actually i just really enjoyed the journey that it took me on like okay. i actually really felt like um i like it put me in a universe that i thought personally i actually thought was quite well thought through and okay. then and then it created this very entertaining journey where mm. it just carried me through um he he's kind of on the run sure. everything looks really quite cool i thought mm. like yeah it's kind of aged but in quite a cool way okay um and yeah i just i just thought it was a really enjoyable journey but i i would totally agree it wasn't very good it was just that that's fair enough and and for me then part of the reason why my enjoyment was less i can forgive things for being unrealistic we're not going to the cinema to watch you know a day in the life of a documentary but when things come in with a really like out there concept mm -hmm. that's asking you to suspend a lot of disbelief mm -hmm. for me personally i need the um explanations around why they do certain things to to be really well thought out okay and if they're not then i i personally you were this critical of kingdom of the apes the other day <laughs> yeah I, I don't know why well, i th didn't think any of that through <laughs> the, the world some bits of it made sense can i make a hypothesis here i think that for you from from our previous discussions mm. if the dialogue is corny it can destroy a movie for you yeah maybe. i really can because the, the dialogue in kingdom of the apes although it wasn't exactly great it didn't destroy didn't it really but i don't it. think that the world building was any more watertight or interesting or it was just it didn't have these really every line felt like it was it could have just been put in a trailer like <clears throat> some trailers better than others but they were always like very corny kind of quotes yeah. and i know that you hate that thing so much mm. that maybe you're kind of then misdirecting that a little bit and that's why you give a bad enjoyment score you didn't enjoy it and then it kind of yeah, makes you pick up that. other things potentially yeah because I, I, I gotta say I, I i do think that you know if especially I, we've we've just watched Furiosa and we watch kingdom of the apes right mm. the content's just come out for anyone who's interested and they both have world building in. Mm. And I would say, I, I would stand by the fact that this world building was actually more well thought out than Kingdom of the Apes and than Furiosa. Like, they it actually made sense. Yeah, potentially. So what I have found about my own um, enjoyment of things is when there is an established world already and yep. then it is built upon with new interesting things, I enjoy that quite a lot. Whereas with this... With something where the concept's so far out there, like in time, mm -hmm. they're basically creating a world from scratch. Yeah. And so if they try and heavy hand it with loads of stuff, yep. it doesn't appeal to me as much. Whereas something like John Wick, that was essentially like a, a gangster movie with a soul hitman running around causing a ruckus. And then there was the illusion, not the illusion, I mean, it, it alluded to this greater underworld with like the um i can't remember the name of the hotel but the one where you go and you use these like gold drachmas to pay okay. with through currency and there were you could see the seeds of this underworld that were more interesting yeah. but they didn't spend too much time on that specifically the concept was there but the story this man going after the people who killed his dog was the great driving force it was the focus and then with this it seemed to all be around the the time element and, and adding new elements to it, like the timekeepers and, and the zones. So it tried to do too much world maybe, building maybe that too was, small of a time I, in addition to action and in addition to like a whole bunch of other stuff and, that they were trying to do. And other things like, um, other things that do grand world building within one film, like the Hunger Games, Yeah, they are relying on rich source material firstly yeah. so i i don't think in time was a book maybe yeah. i'm wrong no, we're out of time long <laughs> overdue <laughs> ironically <laughs> we're 35 minutes into what should have been 15 but um but those things do also like give um precedent for follow-up as well so they kind of set this a lot of it is setting groundwork still enough. and they build upon that but you had to you had to assume you had to assume a bit about the universe because it was just too sure. much yeah for it but i i thought the um there could have been some real blunders 
that I think actually often there are blunders in these things that they didn't fall into. And for me, that just counts for so much. Do you know yeah. what I mean? Well, um, 5.7. I thought it was... Yeah, it was yeah I think I was definitely yeah. too generous. But it's easily in the eights for me in terms of enjoyment. I'll watch it again. Like, that was so much fun. Really? Fair yeah, enough. Yeah, it was just so enjoyable. And I'll tell you what as well. I hate romance in movies. Like, I really hate romance. It's just my... I just can't stand it. It's always so poorly written. But I actually didn't mind this one because it wasn't... It wasn't laid on too thick too early, mm. right? And it wasn't too important. Like, it was just kind of like they teamed up because they teamed up and then they just kind of happened to fall in love. With, like, throughout, it took its time to do it and it kind of didn't feel like sure. too crowbarred in for me. So let's uh, let's wrap things up. I think I think given the amount of time that we've taken, we should probably try and be as fast as we possibly can with the critical score All section right. so we've we've ranked it in two different areas right uh, enjoyment for fred enjoyment for me now we're going to rate it out of 10 in nine more categories plot character dialogue performance visual sound and genre realization what we're going to do we're going to rate it out of 10 in every area then we're going to take the average and determine should you watch it yes or no sure so first off plot plot is the sequence of the events in the narrative do they make sense what is the driving force that goes forwards? <laughs> is it an original idea? Mm -hmm. What did we think of the plot? We're going to go with one minute. One minute. Three, two, one, go. Well, it's original. So the question is, how good is it? It is original in the time sense, but not so original. You mentioned something right at the start, right? It's like, oh, yeah, it's quite similar to some other things. And I'm trying to remember what it was. At the start of this episode, you mm. you made a couple comments where I was like, "Oh yeah, it's not that original after all." Can't remember. Oh, it was the whole like uh, slobs and snobs sort of like let's let's yeah. let's flatten everything out take and down like the yeah, take down but the, the way system. they did it was quite cool. But the, it was original enough. Yeah, um, I think you got to give it marks for the whole t the whole time element. The driving um, forward, I didn't feel like he had that much of a plan really. Like no. it kind of just happened a little bit. Although and they, they, and they gave a lot of leeway for things just happening behind the scenes, like getting the truck, him getting in and, and managing to get behind the. The, the guy at the end. No, they bribed their way into that. I know they, they bribed that. their way in. I know they did, but also like, hmm. Shut up, Fred. I feel like they just threw that line in to explain quite a hard you thing You just said they didn't explain it, and they explained <laughs> yeah, it, but, so shut up. All right, all right. Um, what number do you want to go for? I, I don't think it's... I think there's... I think it's a seven. I think <sighs> it could have done better. I think it needed more time. You know, I think it should have been. <laughs> I didn't even mean that. No, that that's why I laughed. Because he just it needed it more could, time. It could. The world building should have been spread out over three films, and it would have been so much better. But because they tried to squeeze it in such short periods, I think it's limited it to a seven. But it was very watertight, very interesting. Can we? See, well, I don't know about watertight. Can we see what? Other it was sevens definitely we have? watertight. No, we can't. We have to just rate it. We're out of time. Okay, six. So, fuck you. Yeah, right. Okay. <laughs> right. Character. Next, we have character. By the way, I don't have the scripts I sent you. I'm just reading an old one, so apologies for this. Um, character is a collection of beings within the narrative. We have one minute to agree on a rating out of 10. Go. Okay, let's list the main characters for me. Uh, Justin Timberlake. Justin character. Timberlake. Um, Amanda Seyfried's character. Cillian Murphy. Cillian Murphy's character. Neil Caffrey. <laughs> <laughs> we don't know why any of them were called. I literally got the cast. I got the character list up earlier. Um, okay, so on the page, what do we think of those guys? What do we think of those characters? Not the performances, not the dialogue, the the character, the decisions they make, Fred. Um, yeah, the the bad guy was bad. The the, the cop, timekeeper, the timekeeper was was, was nuanced enough. He was very interesting. I mean, I don't know, but he, he what was, happened to his dad? I feel like that was just kind of left a bit, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. Um, Maybe it is a six on pot. I think... All right. Uh, you know what? One of the best performances was from the Minuteman. It's he was pretty good. I know, but that character was good. Character! It's just someone I remembered. So we got the Minuteman, English guy, Killian Murphy, um, the bad, the big bad guy, Amanda Seyfried's character, Justin Timberlake, Justin Timberlake. Character-wise, it was okay. I think the performance and dialogue was the problem. Seven. Seven's fine. Down the yeah. middle. Yeah. Or six. Uh, my very high rating might at the start might have been accounting for the the god awful ratings it's about to get. We've into. definitely we've definitely bumped it up based on that rating. Because I would I would be going lower for both plot and 
Right. And character. Yeah. I, character. I think that your criticisms of the plot were a little unfair in terms of the watertightness of it. Maybe. We, we'll we listen back over and, and listen to your criticism. Show. Maybe. I'll tell you what, we'll see what the comments think. <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm sure it'll be people I'm who sure love the I'm film sure in really time. appreciate <laughs> we'll like, who's your ridiculous criticism, <laughs> yeah. Fred. Oh, yeah, no. Um, I'll do next, we have that. performance. We have a minute to agree on a rating out of 10. Go. All right. Good performances. Killian Murphy was good. As he always. did very well with hard dialogue to make good, no. as was, in my opinion... The guy who played the Minuteman, the English guy. Who's the Minuteman? You know the basically the thug, the gangster who oh, who played the arm okay. wrestler. He yeah. Like he had in that scene, his he had arm some, wrestler was a bit cringe, but yeah. But he, but it, it was a tough scene to act. It was a tough scene. To like act. he had a bit in there where he said um, something about "I'm gonna take you." And then after that, I'm gonna take your yeah, your missus. Oh, and her time. And I was like, he did a good job with that because that line is horrible yeah. Yeah, yeah, to yeah, say. Yeah. So. Look, those two good. Uh, Justin Timberlake was very, you know, like... Great. <laughs> very kind of like posy and whatever, but fine. Yeah, uh, he wasn't that I'm good. not a massive fan of his mum as an actress. Like, okay. She was too small of a part, really. Uh, and Amanda Seyfried was pretty good, actually. She was pretty good. Actually, I do quite like her. Were, it was, was it really just the dialogue? I feel I like the performances that, were okay. Yeah, it's hard for us to give a bad performance mark on this because... They did not have much to work with. Okay, so what do you think? I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to let you take the reins and argue if I disagree. Uh seven i think seven too i think seven's fair enough to that i th- I think plausibly it could be six and it could be eight it's kind of very difficult um wait what the hell oh okay hang on so, so it was dialogue next was it? next we have next we have dialogue we have one minute to agree on rating out of 10 go is there anything that stops this from being like the lowest this is the worst we've ever done in my opinion what would you say any differently we have a few good men is how did we give a few good men to that was when we were just prattling about we didn't okay, even okay, it. maybe we need to remove that we, need uh, to we have a that. three on kingdom of the apes the dialogue was must have been quite bad in that too this was worse than kingdom of the apes for me yeah. but my but then again is it just because i really hate that style of dialogue no, 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 no. Must have at one point they went. Must have thought it was a drive-through. That was hilarious. I can help you get all the time you want. Then they drive into the bank. Yep. Um, look for the slowest car. Yeah, that was pretty cool. You can run, so can you. You know what? Here's what I'm gonna say, right? Here's what I'm gonna say, right, Fred. It's not going to get one out of ten because i think that a couple of those li- the lines that they did come out with that you're being super critical of they weren't that bad you know like i know you hate that style of dialogue but some of them were like they were fine you know they they weren't they weren't one out of ten all right two all right two <laughs> it's so bad. i think the performers did well with what they had okay next we have visual cgi costume makeup out of 10, go. One right. minute, go. So the car crash was was a car crash. It was bad. That was, it was exactly that, Frank. <laughs> uh, any other visual elements? Uh, the I really liked the co- like the, the, the design, design of everything, like the design of the cars and everything. Like it was quite a yeah, cool looking okay. film. Fair enough. And the um, whole digital kind of like naughty. It, it was really very... going for a Matrix vibe, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. It like was, even the green, it was very green it elements was, as well. You like could the Matrix. see the inspiration. Um, other than the CGI, there weren't any moments where I was like, wow, that's atrocious. No. And I mean, yeah, it's just such an interest. It was so bad. It was like so noticeably yeah, bad. It just yeah. throws you off for everything else, doesn't it? Um, I, I, I don't know if it, I, I think maybe six. Yeah, go on. Because the could, visual style could, was uh, interesting. I was going to say, uh, yeah, maybe I kind of want to give it a seven because I really like the way that some of the things, like you cast, right? <laughs> Right. <laughs> yeah, to be fair. We gotta give him some Mustangs. Mustangs beautiful. Cast Mustangs and leather jackets. Right, give it a seven. Seven. Right, sweet. <laughs> <laughs> that sweet told me that you were he was thinking that they're still punching him up his weight with a the seven there. <laughs> give it a seven. Right. Sweet. <laughs> yes. <laughs> nice. Okay, next we have sound. I would give you an idea of what that means, but I don't know. Sound. Um it any, any, did it have a soundtrack? I don't remember. I don't remember songs. Did it? Did it have it, like the score, score? Was fine. There wasn't any like terrible dubbing. Was there anything that made it better than a six? Um, I thought actually, yeah, the music for some of the suspenseful scenes I did notice. And that's true. Yeah, there was. 
There was suspe- there was so, music yeah. when uh, when the mum died and they were running towards each other. Yeah, I remember the music. Brilliant like, scene. Yeah, that. Did you notice how they all ran really weirdly? <laughs> Especially because well, she was in like, heels, so man. No, I was more thinking about Justin Timberlake with this like upright running. Um, so they're running together, but then again, Music's when good. she did die, like it, I think the music actually worked against it a bit there because okay. it looked so funny. Um, but I, 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 what, like a six, five? I feel like it's, I feel like, I, I, no, 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 I feel like five is bad and I don't feel like the sound was bad in this film. Six. 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 Did we just do that? We did that before a minute. Go mm. us. Right. The it's best, time. Everyone's favourite. Genre realisation. <laughs> sci-fi romp. I think it's a sci-fi romp. Which other sci-fi romps have we had? Star Wars. Star Wars is a sci-fi romp. <laughs> Which I didn't mind. <laughs> um, <laughs> um, what sci-fi romps have we got? A lot of sci-fis are quite rompy. Did it kind of come under the Kingdom of the Apes sort of worlds? I feel like it did. And the Furio. So I feel like there was a thing there, a kind of a, a, mm-hmm. you know, a pattern between those guys and, and Star Wars. I preferred Kingdom of the Apes and Furiosa. Uh, King, it. yeah, okay. Probably. Um, I don't, you preferred Furiosa to that? Yeah. Right, okay. But in terms of genre realization, so how? What's the question? What What is genre realization again? Uh, which genre is it in sci-fi romp? Yeah, and how does how it much compare does it, against how 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 well does it do? How much does it um, uh, define its genre? Yeah, how, exemplify how, its yeah. genre. It was fine. Seven. It, it wasn't great, but it wasn't. It was just, it was a sci-fi romp, you know? Like, it wasn't, yeah. I don't know, maybe seven's a bit generous. Mm. I'd probably go six. You know what? I reckon genre realisation a six, which means that the Mate Night podcast has now rated in time 2011 out of 10 in nine different categories. We have rated it the following. Fred's enjoyment out of 10, 5.7. Jambo's enjoyment out of 10, 8.7. Plot, 6. Character, 7. Dialogue, 2. Performance, 7. Visual, 7. Sound, 6. Genre realization, 6. Giving it an average score of 6.16 out of 10, which, as far as I'm aware, means should you watch it? No. <laughs> I think. <laughs> to be honest, if they've listened all the way through, the, we just you spoil probably the whole should. Film. <laughs> Spoilers, by the way. I reckon we do. Sh- I think you should watch it because I had a great time, and Fred's just a bit, you know, sour about how cool it's ever been. Yeah, if you've ever seen some beautiful people in a weird world, give me a crack. If you've seen it before, how would you score it? If you enjoyed this, don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs>